everybody. This is Dr. Eccles. I'm so glad to be back with you again. Uh, I've made a new friend today. This is Miss Chandler, and she was kind enough and brave enough to uh, sit in and let's uh, look at her and see what's going on. Last video, we did uh, a, a patient who had some obvious problems with the neck and shoulder tightness and pain there. And to be honest, that's where most of my patients come when they have a problem, they have pain, and they want to they want to come in and they want to get it fixed. But some of the things that I've noticed over the last 30 years of doing this is that a lot of people, they'll come in with one problem, but we'll find a lot of other problems that they just weren't aware of. And I've come to the realization over the last 30 years that uh, many times people have got issues that aren't causing them any symptoms at all. And what I have discovered is that about you've got to be about 80% broken is my estimation. You've got to be about 80% broken before the first symptoms actually start to occur. That's kind of alarming, but if you think about it, a lot, of, a lot of disease processes are like that. Cancer is like that. You know, they estimate that you have to have the cancer in your body for about 10 years before it actually uh, even forms a small little lump that's big enough to to tell so you know you've got to be way down the road before those things actually start to become symptomatic um, uh, diabetes is that way heart disease is certainly that way you've got to, I've, I've had many people who've told me when they finally have their heart attack their heart was a hundred percent occluded or eighty percent occluded so it can be fairly advanced before you start to notice things the same thing is true with your spine or other problems in your body they, the body just wants to keep you comfortable, I guess, as much as long as possible until finally the, the stress of, of whatever's happening gets too much and it starts to break down. So we're real fortunate to have Chandler today because she's feeling great. She's not having any problems at all, but we're going to go ahead and examine her. We're going to test a lot of different muscles and let's see if we can find anything that might be uh, wrong because wouldn't it be better to fix the problem when it's, let's say, 20, 30, 40% broken rather than waiting till it's 80% broken? Because by that time, there's already degeneration that's starting. There's arthritic changes that are taking place. So waiting for symptoms to occur and be reactive to your health is, is not a great long-term strategy. I know I've been guilty of it, and I know all of my patients have been guilty of it, and most of us are. But being proactive and taking care of yourself ahead of time to make sure is, is a lot better strategy for, uh, for long-term health. Uh, another uh, example that I, I just now thought about that I wanted to mention was that of tooth decay. I've, I've gone to the dentist before with you know just a regular checkup and he, find, he found a cavity or the, what was the beginnings of a cavity. But I had no tooth pain, I had no sensitivity, no problems at all. But yet if we wouldn't have found that, that would have gone on to become a full blown cavity and then I might have needed a root canal or whatever. So it's really a good idea to, to get things checked out long before you start to have symptoms. And I see this in my practice every day. Somebody will come in for neck problems and we'll get their neck problems fine, but we'll also find out that they've got lower back issues that they didn't even know they had because there was no symptoms to tell them so. So we're gonna get Miss Chandler to lay down on the table. I'm gonna check some muscles and we're just gonna see what happens. Okay, so we've got Miss Chandler on the table. That wasn't a hard thing to do. She was ready to lay down anyway. So now what we're gonna do, and, and most of you hopefully have seen some of the videos that we've done in the past. However, for those of you that haven't, we're gonna be testing a lot of different muscles to see which ones are working and which ones aren't. And we're not talking about just to see how strong she are. She's very fit, she's probably very strong, but sometimes muscles are just neurologically not connected. They're just not working properly. Uh, and what that means is that the weak muscle is not really the problem. There's going to be something in the body that, that is the problem, and it's causing those muscles to be weak. And that problem can take the form of mechanical, chemical, or emotional type of issues that are shutting those muscles off neurologically. So, um, and what's interesting is that the problem could be anywhere in the body. You know, I, I get lots of people who are having shoulder pain but the problem is in their neck. And part of it could be in their foot, part of it could be in their abdomen, it could just be anywhere. 
So that's one of the reasons I really like this uh, technique because, you know, as well-meaning as patients are, they'll often come in and tell you right where it hurts and they'll expect you to go to that very spot and make their pain go away. And it just doesn't work that way. Uh, for those of you who know me, I've got a little miniature uh, dachshund at his home and we love him to death. His name's Yoda. And I laugh and I joke around. And I say, you know, if I accidentally step on Yoda's tail, it's the other end of him that barks. So oftentimes we've got barking going on in different areas of our body, but that in no way means that that's where the problem is. So it's hard to sometimes get that over to patients, but it's a very real phenomenon. So we're just going to start by just checking some muscles and uh, let's see what goes. We're going to take this hand off the body, Miss Chandler, and you're going to keep your arm. You've got to wake up now and go to work, okay? okay? So you keep that arm right like that, and it's like, there we go, perfect. She just kind of instinctively knows what to do. Good. And we're going to start by checking these muscles. And for those of you who are, um, you know, anatomy guys, I'll go ahead and call out the muscles. It's not important that you really know, but some of you really might like to know what they are. So. We're going to start by, just relax a minute, we're going to start by checking her right posterior deltoid, push back that way for me. And that muscle, we're looking for a good lock, it just locks right in place. When we push on a muscle and it ratchets or she just can't hold her arm up, we know we've got a problem. But that was no problem at all. So now we're going to check her upper trapezius, which is right up in this area, on this side, push back that way for me. And that muscle locks in place perfectly too. Now we're turning her thumb to where it's pointing to the floor. Her elbow is straight. And positioning is so important with this. Uh, if they're not positioned correctly, a weak muscle can look strong because the, per the patient will, they will try to recruit other muscles by turning their arm or moving it a little out of position. And so they can get more strength doing that. You gotta really be guarded against that push down right there for me. Perfect. Locks in place. That's the middle trapezius. Now this is the lower trapezius. Push down there. Very good. She's doing great so far. Push. Keep that there. Down. Very good there. And then we're going to have her go straight across for the pectoralis major. Good. Bring your arm. Uh, bend it for me here and you're going to rotate your arm against my hand here. Push against my hand. Okay. There we go. That's the subscapularis. Push back this way. Very good. That's the infraspinatus. Put your, elbow, your hand under here. Don't let me pull your arm up. Very good. And push out that way. Very good. We did the teres major, um, teres minor. And now we're doing the supraspinatus. Push out this way. Very good. We'll do the latissimus dorsi. Keep it real tight right there. Okay, very good. All right, so now we're gonna go check the other side. Have to push back that way for me real hard. Posterior deltoid's in good shape. Push back that way, whoops. Keep, put like this, push that way. Ah, uh, there we go. See, she, she, she says, I can't do that. That's real hard. They'll know. They just, they, they're telling their muscle to work, but it won't work. And this isn't a physical weakness like um, she's just not working that muscle out at the gym. It's not like that. This is a neurological weakness that's coming from one of the three vectors that we talked about, either mechanical, chemical, or um, emotional. More than, and it can be all three at once. So her upper trapezius isn't working. Push straight down. That one is, that's the middle, and then the lower trapezius, keep that straight. Oops, excuse me, hit her in the nose, push, push down. There you go, push down, good. Now, turn this way, push straight across. This way? Uh -huh. There we go, good. Now, rotate this way into my hand, good. And rotate back, good. And then put your hand underneath your body. Don't let me pull it up. Very good. Rotate out that way. And then push up this way. Good. And then put your hand right like this. And don't let me turn, pull it out. Keep it tight to the body. Okay, so the only muscle that we found 
in her whole upper extremity is the, the left upper trapezius. But we're going to go ahead and check the muscles in the lower extremity to see if there's anything that turns up from there. Okay, so this is test the psoas muscle, and we're going to have her turn her foot out, bring it out, and then you're going to push straight up against my hand. Very good. These psoas muscles, they start in the back here. They come all the way through the pelvis, and they anchor onto the upper part of the femur. These are huge muscles. And when you see somebody who's hurt their back and they're all bent over or pulled over to the side, that's what's usually going on. These things are in spasm and they've locked down. And I'm telling you from personal experience as well as working with a lot of people with them, they're very, very painful. And if they're left untreated, uh, it can cause chronic weakness in those areas, which really predisposes the person to uh, having lower back issues throughout their life. And it's very important, especially with these muscles, to stay very well hydrated. If you get dehydrated, these muscles will go into spasm and it'll be, uh, not, that's not good. So uh, stay well hydrated and keep those muscles working. Check this side, turn your foot out, push straight up. And with her, they're really locking in good. Now we're going to come down here and check the tensor fasciolata. Chandler, put your foot in and push up and out for me. And that is locking in place well. Up and out. Very good. Both of those are working just great. Now we'll check the rectus femoris, which is this muscle right here. Straight up. Push up for me. Push up here. I'm going to recheck this one. I think it might have been a little iffy. Push up. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty pretty weak. So the, uh, could you tell a big difference there in the way those, those muscles were? And they, the patient will normally be able to tell if the muscle, they'll, they'll just know they, they can't move their leg, they can't hold it up. Uh, she's, uh, I believe you're a massage therapist, is that correct? So she's real aware of bodies and even how her own body's working. So she knows that when she goes to push up with his, it just, it just won't lock into place, whereas this one will. So when we see a rectus femoris uh, problem like this, it normally indicates that she'll have a posterior sacrum on this side, but some sort of pelvic distortion. And uh, we can show you how we go about correcting that. But moving on, uh, we'll check the iliacus muscle. Push straight up here. And that is not working either. Push up here. Now keep in mind that Chandler has no symptoms. <laughs> she has no, no pain in her back or anything like that. But yet we're finding, we've already found um, two muscles that aren't even working, which are reflecting back, showing us that she's probably got some problems in her spine that she's just not aware of yet. Okay, turn your feet in. Don't let me pull them out. This checks the gracilis. Very good. Relax. Pull in this way. Good. Pull in this way. That checks the adductor magnus. Toes up. Real tight up. Don't let me pull them down. Anterior tibialis. Very good. And then I'm going to have her push down into my hand real hard. This is a quick way to check the gluteus maximus. Push back, push down, very good. And uh, I think that's all I'm gonna do there. I think I've got all those. So now we're gonna check a few other muscles here. Bend your knee and bring your leg way up. See, she's really flexible. Now push your leg this way, real tight, push in. Okay, this checks the obturator externus muscle. And it's a really, it's a little bitty muscle and it's up near the hip where the hip goes in. It's very important because um, we've seen several people that have labial tears in, inside their acetabulum. That labia can get torn. And when that tears, that muscle will blow. And we've got to keep that muscle really working uh, really good to help get that acetabulum repaired. It seems to seems to work very good. I've had several patients that got completely over that. The surgery for that particular procedure is not all that successful and there's a really long recovery period. So I always like to check that. This is the piriformis muscle here. Push in that way. 
push in real hard. We're going to give her that one. Don't Now, we've got her foot turned in here. Don't let me turn it out. This is an important muscle. It's the popliteus muscle, and it's in the back of the knee, and it goes around, and it's the actual muscle that stabilizes the knee joint. So when I find this weak, I, I always want to find out if they're runners or that kind of thing, because if they are, they're going to wear their knee out. And uh, we want to get that knee stabilized by strengthening that muscle. All right, now, relax. Let's go ahead and check the hamstrings. Toes up for me, and then pull your heel to your bottom real tight. Real strong there. Put the toes down. This checks the calf or gastrocnemius muscle. Pull. And she's real strong. Put your knee down like this and pull in this way. And that checks the sartorius, which starts over here, goes all the way down. It's a real long, thin muscle, and it hooks over on this side of the leg. And those were all good. All right, now let's check this piriformis. Let's go up here and check this obturator externus. Push in for me. Good. Push in this way. Good. Toes in. Don't let me turn them out. She's got great knees. Great knees. Toes up. Pull here. Good. Toes down. Pull. Good. And put this down. Relax this. Push. Pull here. And those are good too. Okay. You can relax. Okay, so we found a muscle up in her uh, area that more than likely relates to her neck area that has given her some problems. And we found, I guess one major muscle here in the lower back was the rectus femoris. I think that's the only one that we found. Oh, and the iliacus uh, down there that wasn't working, which is gonna probably be some lower back or pelvic issues. The main point of this video was to show you that Ms. Chandler's not having any pain. She's not having any problems. She does have problems, she just doesn't know it. Okay, this is where the, like the dentist finds the cavity before it starts to hurt. So we found some back issues here that would be best if they were corrected now so that there's not a lot of degeneration and arthritic changes that take place in her spine because that's when they start to really show up. And we don't want them to wear out, we want them to we want them to be, she's a young, young lady. We don't want her to be in her 30s or 40s by the time these problems start to rear their ugly head. Okay, so we found that Ms. Chandler has a weak rectus femoris. And to, just to refresh your memory, it's this muscle right here. It hooks on, it starts here and it goes down and it hooks right here. Push straight up for me, push up, and she just has nothing there. So um, close your eyes a second. Now open your eyes, and Chandler, I want you to leave your feet apart while we're doing this. Now what we're gonna do is this, this is kind of like a check engine light that comes on. When a check engine light comes on on your car, you know that light isn't really the problem, it's just telling you that there is a problem. It's the same thing with this muscle. It's not really the problem, it's just showing us that there is a problem. So through this muscle testing, we are gonna locate all of the areas in the body that are causing this muscle to go weak. And remember, they could be in her neck, they could be in her foot, they could be in her back, they could be a vitamin deficiency, it could literally be anything. So I need you, this is where you gotta come awake again. Keep your arm right there for me. Perfect. And we're just finding out these areas. There we go, visceral organ. There it is. So this is what we call a visceral organ reflex. It's going to be a little tender right here. Yeah, feel that? So organs reflex into uh, muscles and muscles reflex back into organs. And that's what's happening with her. This is probably related to the gallbladder. And we're just going to sit here and hold this for a few minutes until I'm actually feeling for pulsing in both hands and once those pulses synchronize we know that this particular component of the problem is actually corrected and we'll move on to the next
okay. So we're feeling that pulsing. Sometimes you'll, you won't feel anything for a little while, and then all of a sudden you might feel a pulse here, and then a pulse over here, and a pulse over here, and then eventually they'll, they'll start to synchronize. And when that happens, we're gold. So I need you back with me. Here you go. Put your arm up a little more. Right there. Perfect. Here we go. Okay. So this is showing up as being... Um, push. Oh, push. Yeah, just look. This is showing up as being a sacrum that's out of place. Uh, the sacrum is the bone that is where your tailbone, right above your tailbone that's hooked on. Your sacrum is actually uh, right above your, your coccyx, the tailbone. Hers is rock posterior on this side right here. So we'll show you how we go about adjusting that. Would you like for me to adjust that for you? Sure. All right. Come over here and roll on to your side for me. Now, how long has it been since you've been adjusted? Mm, two years. Okay, so it's, it's yeah. been a long time since she's been adjusted. And I always explain to my patients that, you know, you might get a little sore from this. just like going to the gym. You know, if you go to the gym and you like, I haven't been in a while and I went the other day and I'm sore today. So I explained to them that they might be sore. They might even feel worse before they feel better. And I think that some doctors have done themselves and their patients a real disservice if they don't explain that. Because I've had so many patients that came in and go, I went to the chiropractor and I felt worse when I left. And I said, well, did the doctor explain to you that you might get sore? And they go, no, he didn't say that. Well bad on him because these it's very normal that you could get a little bit sore it doesn't happen all the time but it does so and it's perfectly normal like when you have a big if you had a big um, splinter in your arm it might hurt a little bit pulling it out but once it's out then the body can actually go on to heal once this sacrum is back into place her body can go on to heal Okay, so we've got Miss Chandler over on her side. This is this this is the sacrum right here. It goes all the way down to her coccyx here. This part of her sacrum is rocked backwards this way. So we're just gonna gently. Oh, table's moving a little bit on me. Come on over with me a little bit. Nope, nope. There you go, just like that. That's a little push, just like that. Ooh, Chandler, you did that good. All right, lay on your back for me. Keep your feet apart, and I need your hand again. This is the way we go in and find out what all is broken. And you know, she's got something in her foot out of, out of position as well. And if you ask her, does your, does your foot hurt? She'd say probably no, right? Has your foot been bothering you at all? Yeah, it's not hurting. But yet it's showing that it needs to be adjusted. Fourth toe, just like that. And what I love about this system is it guides you toward everywhere the problems are and lets you know when you're finished. And we are finished. So we'll go back and recheck that muscle now. Chandler, you remember that was pretty weak before. Let's give it another shot. Push up for me. Now it's working. Yeah. A lot stronger, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Push up again. Yeah, it's locking in place really well. Very good. So uh, just to kind of recap, we find a weak muscle and then we let our, the, the body through the muscle testing tell us where all of the different problems are that are causing that muscle to be weak. In this case, it was her gallbladder. She also had a, a sacrum on one side that was out of place uh, and maybe a couple other things I forget. I just kind of go get busy and I forget, but those are the kind of some of the things that showed up. And uh, so let's just end up by saying, if you've never experienced this kind of chiropractic, it's completely different. It's called applied kinesiology. I would encourage you to maybe find out if there's a practitioner in your area. If you're lucky enough to be coming to Austin, please feel free to call me or, or come to my webpage, uh, jeffeckles.com. We'd love to help you. We've actually had people uh, through these videos come from all over the world to help us, to, to see us, and we've been able to help them. So it's been wonderful. Thanks again for joining us. Be sure to tune in for more episodes in the near future. Thanks.
with hundreds of videos that you can stream on virtually any device to help you reduce stress, lose weight, or just improve your health and well being overall. At wellnessplus.tv, we are dedicated to helping you on your health and wellness journey. Join wellnessplus.tv to find hundreds of videos to help you improve the health of your body and your mind. Wellnessplus.tv, get well, feel better.